in this video we're going to take a look at programming a lathe part. Now for this we're using a drawing created in an earlier video which you can also use an import drawing as well. The steps will be the same. The first thing to do is come over to turning stock, right click and go to edit. This is where we step set up our stock values. The face is most commonly set at zero but you can change that as well. That's where the material starts. Cutoff value in this part will say is minus three. And then our end of stock, this is going to be how big the part is that simulates. We'll say negative 3.5. And then our overall stock diameter. Now if the part has a hole through the center, we'd have an internal diameter as well. And then you have clearance values for those. Point 0.1 should work on the face and diameter on this part. And this part does not have an internal diameter, so we'll just skip over this and click OK. Now, once the stock's set up, it should display on the screen going all the way around as if it were 3D. Come back to a top view. Now, once we've set up that stock, we're ready to go ahead and add a tool path. Now, to do this, we right-click Turning Tools and go to Turn. Then we get all of our tool paths. Rough, Finish. The difference between Rough and Finish is the rough toolpath will do a rough and a finish path if needed. The finish toolpath will only do a finish toolpath, like say if you were maybe machining a casting. Then you get other options such as groove, thread, drill, cutoff, and stock feed. Now for the rough and finish, both of these will do either a facing operation or a turning operation. This is just a setting. Let's go ahead and choose rough. This will load a feature rough to the cam tree. Then we right click on geometry and left click reselect. And we select what parts of the drawing we're going to cut. Then right click OK. You'll see the little red dot next to geometry disappears. And also when we click on geometry we can see highlighted in the screen what's been selected. Next is to right click on rough and then go to edit. And you could set up whether or not if you output separate moves, which is going to give you a long coded program, or if you're going to use can cycles, which if available for your machine through our post processors, is going to give you the shortest amount of code. This is where you can set whether the cycle is for turning or for facing. And it gives you a picture preview of what's going to happen after you choose this. Let's go ahead and go to turn, rough, and finish. And we'll set our depth of cut, let's say one eighth per pass, and then our allowances for Z and X, and our overall stock diameter. Now for the system compensation, we have this set on. What it does is it calculates the toolpath based off the theoretical tip of the tool, which is why the toolpath drawn here is a little bit inset to the model, which you'll see on your file as well if you use the system compensation. Now, if we turn that off, what it does is it gives us point-to-point -point movement of exactly the model. Then you'll have to use the machine compensation to account for moving the tool over. Next is to go to the rapids. The default rapid should always go the proper direction for departing the piece based off of which operation you've selected and your tool orientation. But if you need to be very specific, you can specify whether or not if X moves then Z, or Z then X, or even both at the same time, or move to a defined point on the screen. In this case, let's just use the default, and we'll come to our leads. Now this is our approach and depart from the material. We'll go ahead and add an eighth of an inch to Z. Then we come to our tools. Now, in our tools, we have our nose radius, tool angle, and also cutting angle. And then Bobcad will calculate the theoretical point for the tool, as well as you also have an IC diameter. And then your tool tip style. Now, the tip style is just uh, pretty much what kind of geometry is on the nose of the tool, so that Bobcad knows how to calculate the tool path. In this case, we'll just choose a diamond insert. And then you have your tool label. This is where you can describe your tools. And the description that's pulled in if you've set up your tool database. We can look at the tool database in just a moment. Then you have your feeds and speeds, whether it outputs RPM or constant surface speed. 
and then your feed rates which get manually entered here. And then your spindle direction either clockwise or counterclockwise. Now these tabs up here you'll see orientation. Orientation is which side you're cutting on. If we're cutting from the right and cutting an outside diameter the orientation would be a 1. If we were doing an ID turn or a bore we need to swap that to a 4. Same thing if we're cutting off the other side of the part. In this case though we use 1. You should have a very similar description in your machine programming manual for the tool orientation. Then we have our machine info which is just the tool numbers, the offset register and turret position, as well as its home location, which the tool will travel to in between each feature. And you can change this at any point. Once we've set up the tool, we click OK, and then it'll calculate our tool path. Once we've set up all of our tool paths, we're ready to come in and select the post processor that we're using, which is right here. And let's say we're going to use a Haas TL. We'll choose Open, then OK. Now at this point, once we've selected our post, we're ready to go ahead and post out the program. Or come in and simulate. Let's go ahead and select a different post. Let's say we use the FNUC. post the code again you'll see if the code will update for that post processor and if we want to see what the part looks like before we send it to the machine you can right click on turning stock and go to verify and this will launch the simulation we'll go ahead and drag the slide bar over to speed it up and then press start and you could see the tool tip cutting the part and stepping down as it goes if we just give it a few moments I'm going to speed it all the way up and we'll see our completed cut. Go ahead and end. Now for the tooling database, if you want to be able to select your tools at a feature level instead of entering them, you can use this select tool button. You could select tools from whatever you've set up in your tool database. To add a tool to the tool database, simply right click turning tools and go to tools. And you could see here your different tool types, rough, finish, grooving, boring, threading, drilling, and cutoff. Let's go ahead and come to rough and add a tool. To do this we simply click add, fill out our description, and then enter the tooling information and its orientation. And this is all the information that will pull into the toolpath dialog. Click OK. Now if you have a special scenario where you're using custom tooling, Bobcat will account for that. You can right click turning tools and assign tool holders and inserts to tools that you've set up in the database. You can find more information on setting up custom tools in the help files as well as up on our website.